You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Monday, the 16th of January. The Scottish University lecturer has found himself under attack by the Marxist establishment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has spoken openly to the Russian people in his attempt to win a third term as Russian President. The stock market in Europe is flickering between a positive and a negative with investors still on the fence. Al-Qaeda militants have captured a town in the capital near Sana'a in Yemen. Elections in Kazakhstan are reported to be non-democratic. UK News A Scottish University lecturer has found himself under attack by the Marxist establishment by commenting that not having mass ethnic minorities in Scotland saved it from the widespread race rioting in Britain last summer. Dr Stuart Wayton, the brave outspoken lecturer who ignored the Zionist political correctness in Britain and who wrote a paper on the cause of the race riots, has sparked left-wing anger. He spoke out about the fact that no one drew attention to say that there were many blacks involved in the rioting. Scotland's black students officer, Soraya Prakash Bata, tried to blast that students would be appalled if they believed in the paper by Dr Wayton. One spokesperson commented, that when it comes down to equality, where is the white student's officer to defend the paper? A news flash has just reported that the NHS in Britain is now £16 billion in the red. A party spokesperson commented that this figure is no doubt helped along by the massive amounts of NHS money spent in medicating the immigrants from the third world that enter our country in varying states of health. Euronews Russian President Vladimir Putin has spoken openly to the Russian people in his attempt to win a third term as Russian President. He told the Russian people that he was the one who stopped civil war in Russia and helped the country through hard times when he first came to office. In his own words, he explained to his nation that it was he who saved Russia from what he called disintegration. The stock market in Europe is still flickering between a positive and a negative with investors still on the fence. Some sources say this is because investors do not know which direction to take over the closed US market today. World News Al-Qaeda militants have captured a town in the capital near Sana'a in Yemen. The security forces are saying that Al-Qaeda militants have gained a stronghold in this southern town. The Supreme Court in Pakistan has issued a contempt notice to its Prime Minister. Pakistani Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani ignored the Supreme Court's orders on opening an investigation into corruption within the government. Syria's problems are continuing because of its military and its political opposition to President Bashar al-Assad. The opposition have set up hotline networks with themselves and also involvements with outside countries. Senior officials in the United States on reporting that the Republican presidential candidate, John Huntsman, has dropped out of the presidential race to allow Mitt Romney a clearer run at the presidency challenge against Barack Obama in the next US elections. Reports of car bombings in northern Iraq have intimated that eight people have been killed in the town of Mosul. The bombing was an attack on the Shiites. Three more people are reported to be seriously injured in the blast. Elections in Kazakhstan are reported to be non-democratic. Due to the way the voting and the election has been run, international monitors from other countries have slammed the way these elections have been carried out. Monitoring teams have said that the elections in Kazakhstan have failed to meet the required fundamentals of a democratic vote. Thought for the day. Is it me or am I seeing Nepalese everywhere? I live in a small town in Hampshire. I moved here from Surrey two years ago And even then, thanks to Joanna Lumley and her failing career, Cambly was walking law like Kathmandu every day. But down here? We now have, in the last year or so, umpteen takeaway food shops, ranging from pizzas to curries, and parts of Borden look like you could hire a Sherpa to take you up a bleep bleep mountain. 
As a nationalist and a grumpy old woman, I'm asking this question. Do all the hundreds, nay thousands, of Nepal citizens over here have anything to do at all with the British Army? It cannot be so. During Lumley's tear-jerking display of wheeling around ancient Gurkhas in their wheelchairs, the poor old souls looking like they were mummified a long time ago, there was no doubt that these poor old fossils had fought some war many, many years ago. But looking at the clans of these people walking around southern England now, I doubt if any have ever at any time walked on a parade ground, or indeed had relatives that had done so. So why in God's name do we have to take them all in? Nepal must be practically empty now. Considering a village over there took around four clans per village, they're now all over here. So what do we have? An empty country called Nepal. A good move would be to send them all back there with their very good army pensions, and the ones who have nothing to do with the army but are still collecting on our benefit system would have to manage as they did before they came over to us, as indeed they managed for many hundreds of years before Lumley opened the floodgates with the Labour government in decline. I do not need to see these people. I do not need a Nepalese pizza or curry. I do not need them, full stop. My youngest son went to our local Tesco last week and was asked by a Nepalese security guard, in very bad English, to remove his hoodie. He did so, but asked why. Of course the guy couldn't understand English, so that was that. You do not have to be a racist or a nationalist to feel things are not quite right in this country any more. And finally, a mouse has been stuffed in heroic stands in a Dutch museum. The mouse looks like a superhero surrounded by fireworks and is now on display. The reason for this is because two men tied the mouse to a rocket and fired it into the air on New Year's Eve this year. The mouse that did not survive is now a heroic symbol in the Dutch Museum for all to see. The mouse has been called Astronomer Mouse. The two men that did the terrible deed were arrested and are awaiting trial. The museum, which is specially set up for heroic animals, houses a stuffed sparrow called Tennis Balmus which was accidentally killed by a tennis ball. At least this poor little mouse attained a national status which his two tormentors never will. Perhaps one could class this as a mouse hate crime, which should result in a more severe sentence. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>